Previously on the DSM chassis swap, the frame of my 1990 Mitsubishi Eclipse is so rusty, I'm not going to try to salvage it. Rather, we're swapping the engine, all-wheel drive drivetrain, interior, everything into a completely bare 1996 Eagle Talon TSI all-wheel drive shell. I'm going to take all of this and put it in all of that. At the start of this build, I thought we'd have it done in three days. Starting today and finishing on Sunday. But I'm about to learn just how time consuming swapping everything from one car to another really is. I don't wanna beat on that too much. This is why we need PB Blaster. Where's the PB? PB Blaster. Hey. I'm Jesse H. Nikkei. I've had my 2G DSM for 23 years, almost 24 years now. Uh, it is a lifestyle that you can't let go of. I'm gonna take the passenger side hub from the old car and put it on the driver's side spindle on the new car because the driver's side hub was no good, but the passenger side one is good, and the passenger side on the other one is good. So it's a lot of mix and matching. So I have a 98 GSX, fully blown like track mod car in good life. It was on the old motor, it was like 380 horsepower. Now we're gonna go back to a two liter. Ken wants to make 600 on, on the Sunday morning tune, I think, or 650 on a Sunday morning tune. So Ben had messaged me in, I think it was like October or something like that, saying that he wanted to get uh, a DSM. So we kind of collaborated on looking at different ones. I didn't really get to go look at any of them, but he would send me them and, and I'd look at them and see what I thought. They were all basket cases. And then he found this one and it seemed pretty good. <laughs> and this is one of the dreaded problems with DSMs. Yeah. Up here's solid, but this. In here, look at that, look at, look at how much that all moves. That's the big problem with these things. My name is Paul Jaquish. I met Ben just on this trip. Um, I've been messing with DSMs since 2004. I think I got my first one uh, when I was still in high school and I've had about eight of them since. My current car races time attack and track mod as well, like Jesse, making 740 at the wheels, lots of aero. It's always challenging. That's kind of why I like the DSM world. Not many people do it, so you gotta kind of reinvent the wheel sometimes. But it's gonna be a challenge today. We got a lot of work to do. Hi, my name's Chris Alvarez, or Life Sabishi, if you know me on TikTok or YouTube. I am a DSMer. I have been doing welding and fabrication for about three or four years now. So right now we're working on getting this small hole fixed on the DSM. Uh, we are going to clean up the profile and then get this block off plate uh, placed on top of there and either tacked or siliconed in. Oh, hi. So I have a 97 Mitsubishi Eclipse uh, turbo, all wheel drive, um, the works. It has a fairly extreme wide body kit on it that was originally to a BRZ that I custom cut to fit my Eclipse. While Kenny is reassembling the bottom end of the Bill 4G63, which you saw in the last episode, the rest of the guys are dropping the rear subframe on the Eclipse, which is miraculously less rusty than the one I was given to roll the talon around on. Yeah, you wanna work on the brakes, getting the brakes disconnected? Yeah, that's gonna be fun. And uh, yeah, don't get it in your eyes. Oh yeah. Yeah, if anybody needs a... Safety glasses or anything? Yeah, we die like men around here. It's cool working with someone that's been around DSMs as much as I have because we kind of can just, we kind of know what to tackle and it is a good workflow going back and forth, so. Yeah, I guess we're gonna come out, right? Yeah, because they got to the ABS computer app, or is that yep. the airbag? That's, uh, the, ABS, that's, that's the airbag. the airbag, yeah. I'm gonna take that out and there's two clamps there, I think, if I remember correctly. So in order to get the e-brake disconnected, we gotta pull the center console out to get to where the uh, lines connect to a bracket in here. Uh, so really, we're just gonna pop this out. We're gonna have to pull the seats out. There's some screws back here on each side to hold the center console in, and then this all pops out. We'll get this out, take the lines off, and then we can drop the subframe down uh, and get it removed and ready to go in the other car. And don't forget your toe arms are gonna need to get guided out as, uh, we, as we bring it down. The the trailing arms? The, yeah, the toe arms. The trailing arm, yeah, these guys. Yeah. The front arms, yeah. I, I call them toe arms. I've been talking to Paul for a long time, actually. We've been, we've been talking on Instagram for a long time, no? Yeah, yeah, quite a few years. So it's. 
it's a cool opportunity to actually get to meet everybody and uh, we're all working well together. We have Jesse and we have Paul. They're two of maybe the three only people right that uh, that I know of in the world that uh, time attack on uh, DSMs and the amount of knowledge that these two guys bring to the table is immense so this is like a holy grail type of like you no know, situation they don't even know it you know yeah, we're, good, we're good for down all right I'm clear yeah yep you can come down at whatever come pace down. you want yeah we're good all right one two three <sighs> All right. All right. All right. Good job, boys. Oh. Time for a beer now or what? <laughs> Yo, what is this? Is this JD Well? <laughs> Dude, I'm not even kidding. Look at this. Look at this. It looks like it. They JD Welded the plant. With a kink. So now that we got the drive shaft out and the carrier bearings down, we get to see the beautiful weld work that they did to make a front wheel drive chassis work as an all wheel drive chassis. Um, I'm kind, of, I'm kind of confused as if they were using these self-tapping screws to locate the carrier bearing mounts or if they were added support. Yeah, I think they used them as locating and then they tried to weld around like them and then this. decided that the weld sucked so they were just going to leave them on there. I wonder if that would break off. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. That's no, solid. Uh, you hear that? That's solid. <laughs> we're going to start working on fuel tank, fuel filler neck, and whatever else we can figure out back here. And then... We get to do it all over again on that one, except that one's got no fuel tank or a bunch of other stuff. So actually shouldn't be too bad. Beautiful fortunes. Mm -hmm. They're so pretty. Dirty, yep. but that's how we like them. So make sure you get them clean. I'm gonna make sure they're nice and clean. Don't you worry. Yeah. Fortunato's very own director of motorsports and my good buddy Devin Herndon came to the shop to survey the chaos and made sure his product was looking as good as possible after the hellish road trip I put it through. This is the only reason I came by the way. Clean up the coilovers? Yeah. They need it. I drove two hours for this. <laughs> <laughs> Started removing the fuel tank um, and the forward mounts are not wanting to play nice. The straps here, it looks like they've brazed welded washers on to the studs so that we can't get them off to get uh, the straps off and get the tank to come down so let's, see, let's look up this one and see if this one's got the studs yeah, if that one's got the studs then we just cut that stud right off yeah but then he's gonna not be able to put a gas tank back in this one so is this just going to the junkyard or uh yeah i think yeah i think so <laughs> touche touche <laughs> So we are removing the new car's rear subframe so we can implant the old car's rear subframe and all of its goodies. I think we're going to be changing over these upper control arms to the new old subframe because these are in much better condition than the ones that are on there. Um, these bearings feel alright so I'll probably keep them on. Uh, yeah, just a lot, of, a lot of back and forth crisscross <laughs> and stuff. Moving around. Do you want the impact gun? Oh my god. Go, 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 go. Hold. Dude, that thing is like. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. Awesome. So, um, I think we're changing the whole spindle up. <laughs> That's. Uh, what happened? The bushing is. The bolt is spinning inside the. Well, the bushing is spinning inside the spindle. Yeah, the, the inner collars for the bushing is seized to the bolt. And it's now it's separated from the bushing itself because the bushing's bad. Fun times and gears and gasoline. As we watch this montage of Paul and Chris going absolutely buck wild trying to do a job that should be extremely easy, if not for the ravaging effects of time and weather on a car. It's a good time for me to let you know that we have Eclipse merchandise for sale. This shirt, reminding people of the dangers of purchasing Pennsylvania cars, was the idea which spawned this entire merchandise run. Don't buy PA cars, and do come and go. Family. All right. <laughs> <laughs> now you guys are on the other one. Yeah. Burning out the old bushing. 
uh, so we can press the cup out. And then we'll, we got new bushings we're gonna press in. All right, so we got these lower con the lower control arm and the compression arm. Both boots are, they're low, they're low. No good. So we're gonna go to this one, where these boots are in perfect shape and take these arms off and put them on that one and then take those ones and throw them in the garbage. Oh, would you like to take a seat? <laughs> the black interiors are a little bit more sought after. People like them a little bit more. Um, the Talon doesn't have an interior <laughs> and uh, it would generally help if things uh, lined up. Uh, we are pulling the fuel filter and everything off the firewall so we can transfer all of this to the other car. And there's a lot of all of this. Kenny is just about finished buttoning up the motor as Jesse, Paul, Chris, and now Mark continue removing every last thing off the Eclipse to be moved over to the Talon. Just assume that there's in every crevice. The amount of crap that has come out of this car. Then start taking the heater box apart, getting that out, taking the wire harness out through the firewall. I don't know what any of this is. We'll start this weekend with then having one running car and one non-running car. And with a little bit of luck, by the end of the weekend, you'll have two non-running cars. <laughs> totally in pieces. Uh, I got the inner cups pressed out, and then I just got done pressing in the new uh, poly bushings. So. They're in, we're good to go. Subframe's ready to be hung, just waiting on brake lines. The first thing to rust on the Eclipse had been the brake lines, and rather than try and reuse them, I have Mark making more, this time sans compression fittings. So we're in the process of pulling the fuel pump right now. Got the retaining ring off. Uh, we'll pull the pump out. It's got a Walbro 255 in it right now. So I brought a Walbro 450, which is an upgraded pump. A little bit bigger than what we're running currently. Uh, the plan is to tune the car on E85, so we'll need the extra fuel. So we'll put the fuel pump in, we're gonna run new lines up to the uh, fuel filter, get them ready to make a little more power on E85. Well, we have to get the ABS pump out, uh, just in the uh, good, trying to save time, and put the ABS system back in the new shell. Uh, so we have to disconnect all the lines, but we need to make sure the lines go back in the same spot that they come out of. Otherwise, uh, you know, not that the ABS works anyway, but we wanna make sure that it's we're gonna feed the right wheel at the right time and the right pressure to the right wheel and all that other fun stuff. So we need to make sure. And we have to bleed it out, so. Oh. Day two of the swap concluded with the engine fully assembled and the test fit of our Artec exhaust and Zona 5757S, which was a nice morale boost for everybody in attendance. Tomorrow would be the final day of the build before all the guys went home. So we'd have to make the most of it. We are going to put all of this ABS harness and line and everything from the old chassis into this chassis, move the pump over, get everything on the firewall done so we can start getting ready to put the motor in the transmission. Nothing like trying to get 25 year old brake lines that haven't moved to go back in their home. Uh, our ABS lines are in tight. Prop valve in. With the Zona Rota that we have, um, we also have a new external wastegate. In the previous videos, I'm pretty sure you guys seen, you know, some of the issues we were having on the dyno with it and spike and boost pressures and loaded with springs. Like this is every spring that comes in the kit. And 
Tile just so happened to send us a black one for Black History Month. So we wanna uh, thank them for that. So I wanna go for 20 and that'll allow me to control the torque that this car can put out uh, through timing since the boost will be a constant, you know, 20 PSI. Plain color, the black one, the red one, and then the yellow. That should be 20 PSI or 1.4 bar. Uh, fuel tank is going in, and then fuel tank goes in, then rear subframe goes in. So the nice thing that we are encountering now is that this is actually a factory GSX chassis. GSI all over. That's eh, We're not finding any kind of discrepancies with how the chassis should be set up. So everything just kind of falls right into place. It's a very nice, it's refreshing. I hope Jesse has enjoyed the factory Talon chassis because as the interior comes out of the rusted eclipse, there are more discrepancies. That is a plugged or disconnected Bro. sunroof. In, in 99, Mitsubishi offered a Flintstone model <laughs> where the bottom was removable. One more. One more and you get it. One more and it's gonna one go. One more and the boom. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> oh yeah, look at that. So, this I mean, the thing. From the, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. The drive shaft, right? No, that's fine. So it's good that the self-tappers came through the floorboard because that yeah. extra grip. Yeah. Because they definitely. contacted the carpet and the carpet just gave that extra snugness. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, sir. We've been trying to reach you about your extended warranty. Um, <laughs> it appears things have been gone for quite some time. <laughs> <laughs> this is the harness from the new car, not the donor car. So this harness, if that is that chassis, is that chassis in '95? You said it's a 95, that chassis? Ah, yeah, it's a 96. Production date's November 95. So yeah, we're gonna have to pull that harness out and use that one. Yeah, let's go right in. Not, not a bit, it's the same, same thing. It's the same thing, I just go right in. Wrong. I have never seen this in a is that, is that running over there to that? Yes. Yeah, cut all of that. Kenny and Chris were also losing patience with the sorry state of my Eclipse and with the previous owner's upgrades. Actually, the technique that they do in the factory. Yes, sir. This is the engine harness, and your yellow connectors are what connects it to the ECU, so just easily to identify. Feed all of this stuff to the grommet through the uh, through the cab. Lay this over the fender, and everything plugs right in. It's real simple. Yeah, enough so I can get it started. Excellent. Thank you, sir. No problem. I totally knew what I was doing. <laughs> the engine harness is out of the car, and now the true tedium can begin. The removal of the dash and heater core. Yeah! These make the bang bangs. Not that heavy. It's not carbon fiber either. Jeez. So we're just doing some like peddling stuff uh, yeah. right now. <laughs> Pulling out fun. the latch for the hood. That one doesn't have one. There's a bunch of like tiny little stuff like this that you know you don't think about when you think about having to swap chassis. And you you know you forget that it's gonna make things take longer, but you have to do all of it. Um, but yeah, we're almost done with this uh, harness, swapping this over. So this is gonna be fuse box and everything. Uh, what is this, the main main body harness. Um, almost ready to pull this through, and then we can put it over into the talon. Pick it up, pick it up. Oh God. I got you, I'm, 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 I'm on the back. Oh. We gotta lift it up. Okay, like that. We got like a ratchet strap we can put around it. 
I'm about to put the trains on. That's not reassuring. Whoa. Mm-hmm. Whoa, Good what's bread. that? Oh. Mamma yeah. mia. Yeah. Looking like something Michelangelo would have drawn over here. You got some work to do, Tom. Whoa. You're good at impressions, but that would need a little work. What? <laughs> Look at that. Oh. That's weighty right there. We're changing a lot on this car right now, but one thing we're not changing is the Fortune Auto coilovers. I run these on my DSM, on my 2G track mod DSM. Uh, they changed the car significantly from what I had on there prior. Great coilover, great company to work with. This particular set went all the way to Moab, and then Devin was such a sweetheart and came down here and cleaned them off very nicely. Look at that. Like they're out of the box, really, out of the box. <laughs> Mamma mia. That's a spicy meat of all. We're about, what do you think, Ben? A good 30, 40% done? <laughs> so we wanted to get the engine in. Everything else is a uh, drivetrain. Um, we're gonna do the transfer case, but we still have to finish the brakes. Um, the wire harness is there. Um, not quite routed, but it's there. I had to put the dash back in. Um, so we pretty much have about another three, four days worth of work. Um, but after that, should be a running, driving, used to be shell. And the, the one everybody talks about, you know, Ben bought a bad shell. <sighs> we just didn't tell y'all about this one. We just didn't tell y'all about this one. Even though I naively thought that we would be much further along than just hanging the engine by the end of this weekend. In the span of three days, starting today and finishing on Sunday. It just goes to show what a huge undertaking a project of this scale is. I owe a massive, massive thanks to all four of these DSM community legends. Jesse, Chris, Paul, and Kenny all came in extremely clutch in helping with this chassis swap, and I have a feeling this won't be the last time they see this car. 